Welcome to another project here on Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're walking through the historic restoration of the iconic Germania building here in downtown Milwaukee. So let's get started with Milwaukee historian, Bob Giese. Well, Bob, what a beautiful day here in downtown Milwaukee along the Milwaukee River. And we are standing in a very historically significant area of our city. Yes, we are. This used to be West Water Street. You have East Water Street in Juneau Town. This side was Kilburn Town. Today, West Water Street is now Plankington. But there's a lot of history here. You get on the Juneau side, see our city hall? That city hall, when it was built in 1895, was the third tallest structure in the United States. In the entire nation? Yes, the only things taller was the Washington Monument and the newly finished city hall in Philadelphia. And then you also have the Pabst Theater. Captain Pabst had that built. Actually, the theater he bought had burnt down and he was over in Europe. And by Morris Code, he said, I want a brand new theater. I want it built in a year and I want it fireproof. And that's, that's amazing. That's what we got. And of course, our power plant is over here, but that power plant was not for homes or businesses. It was for the streetcar. And oh. they're the ones that needed that electric current. And it was until later that off the streetcar lines, they started connecting to homes and businesses. So I, can't, I can't even imagine how many times I've driven by these buildings and had no idea the historical significance. And it's awesome to know that it gives you a whole new appreciation. And that's just on the east side of the river. There's even more on the west side of the river here? Well, you've got the Cocker Building. That used to be what you call the Lawyers Building because the lawyers had all their offices inside and then they converted that to condominiums. That's what's happening downtown. A lot of these historic buildings are being converted to apartments and condominiums. And this is no exception. Well, this is a perfect segue to our show today because we are focusing on a, on a restoration transformation of a historic building, second to none here in this area of Milwaukee, and that's the Germania building, which has been transformed into residential living. Yes, it has. It's a very historic building. George Brumder came over here from Germany and fell in love with books, fell in love with uh, a woman that enjoyed books also. They opened up a bookstore, all in German, of course, and eventually became the king of the German language newspapers. Milwaukee had six major newspapers, three in English, three in German. And the German outsold the English at that time two to one. And this isn't the 1900s you're talking about, you're talking the 1890s. Yes, and he eventually bought out the rest of the German papers in Milwaukee. He bought papers from Kansas City to Buffalo, Chicago, and control to all this German news. And it was all done out of Milwaukee here. Yes, he needed a larger building. And when he built this, first of all, he had to buy all the lots in order to put that building there. There were 16 lots and he bought them under different names so oh. that they didn't know what he was up to. Oh, and believe yeah. it or not, just see the blueprint of that building, 16 lots, six of them had taverns. Give you an idea how many taverns <laughs> well, we had. That down speaks here. volumes to our Wisconsin heritage. Germans and beer, they go hand in hand, that's for sure. And you see a lot of German influence in it. Look at the top, the Kaiser Domes. Now that was Otto von Bismarck. He wore that helmet. Oh, sure. So they put that on the roof. And if you notice next to the domes, there's balls. And there used to be eagles on those balls. All this represents German heritage. At the front of the building, there used to be a statue, 10 foot tall and it, I think it was about three tons, and that was Germania. And that was a female symbol of German tribes during Caesar's time. And of course, that only lasted about 22 years, because then with World War I, 
in 1918, there was so much resentment against the Germans, some things had to change. And one of them was, they didn't like the name of the building, the Germania building, they had to change that. So that was now Brunder. They did not like that statue. That statue was removed, and then we don't know really what happened. Some people think it was buried, but never found. Some people think it was melted down for armament, which it possibly was, but it's gone. Another thing I want to point out, the date on top, the 1896, people see that, but they never notice what's on each side of it. There's little cherubs, and one's reading the newspaper, and one's reading a book. And of course, that's the business he was in. Sure. He was in making print newspapers and beautiful, excellent books, of course, all in German. And there's other cherubs on the building, and I bet people don't even notice it, but they're there. You got to look for them. Well, you know, when you look at it, and I hope that people have a better understanding of the historical significance of it, you start to appreciate the undertaking that Cardinal Capital and their partners took in rehabbing this. And instead of tearing it down like so many buildings of this era, they decided to historically restore it. And now people have the opportunity to move downtown, live near where they work, and enjoy living in that beautiful building. Definitely. And another thing that a lot of people don't realize, today we take it for granted for underground parking. But when that building was built, the printing presses were in the basement. Now in 1910, they removed those printing presses. We're not sure where they went, but it must have been a special area where they had more room. And they used the basement for parking. It was the first underground parking in Milwaukee. Wow, well, obviously the Germania building has undergone numerous transformations over the years, and now we're gonna go learn about its latest. I appreciate you coming on and Thank sharing you. its historical significance. I enjoy it. Wow, Mark, what a transformation. This is beautiful. Yeah, it's come a long way, eh, Stu? Now, what are we looking at here? This is one of the apartments? This is one of the apartments. This is 308, third floor apartment, the only one with the balcony. It's a one bedroom, one and a half bath apartment. This is a nice unit. You have a great view over Wells Street and looking right downtown towards the City Hall in Milwaukee. This is also the parade route and will be also a future trolley route from Milwaukee. So this is a very attractive unit. And you know, when I think about what was here when we were last, Visiting? Yep. <laughs> what a massive undertaking and the construction process. Are you happy with how it went so far? Oh yeah, it went on budget, on schedule. Now keep in mind that we didn't get a letter to proceed on here until June 6th last year, which means you don't start till about a month after that. We finished June 30th this year. So it was actually less than 12 months this whole project was completed. Was it pretty challenging? I mean, did you run into any unforeseen circumstances? All the way through. From day one, not knowing exactly how the structure was and drilling holes to get all the plumbing done, finding the steel that we didn't know was in place. From finding all the requirements with the high rise, as far as stairwells, elevator requirements, uh, fire sprinkler requirements, fire pump requirements, uh, closing the city sidewalk that was already owned by the building. We owned the sidewalk, so we had to redo the sidewalk. It all had to be enclosed, replaced, and that's a whole different permitting process too. But we're proud of the fact that we did this. It's a great building from Milwaukee. We saved this building from being taken down or falling apart, so it'll last you another 120 years like it did before. Sure, well, when you talk about a historic 
restoration, historic preservation. I mean, seeing is believing. From the outside, all the intricate details that you were able to preserve, and then you come in here and it's a fully modern unit. I mean, I'm looking back here at the amenities that are incorporated into this kitchen. You have beautiful maple cabinetry. I can just tell the quality and soft clothes just by opening and closing them. Stainless steel fixtures, solid surface countertops. Do you find that people who are considering moving down here just can't believe their eyes when they walk inside? They can't. So you got a historic facade of a building with a very modern inside. A lot of people love that look. Very attractive and very durable. So they're going to be able to live very comfortably. And then also, based on your past projects, was this one also green? This one was also green. So there's no urethra formaldehyde, there's no vinyl chloride. All the countertops are outrolled before we bring them in here. We're very diligent on our green. And talk about a nice size. Look at the size of this bathroom. Yep. This is really nice. I mean, how many square feet total is this unit? It's about a thousand square feet. Huge bathroom, huge bedroom. This is one and a half bathrooms. Another bath over by the other side, but the kitchen. There's also laundry in here, so there's stackable laundry in this unit too. Boy, you're looking for something luxury in a historic structure. Doesn't get any better than this in downtown Milwaukee. And what's this, a vault? This is a vault. This is one of the original vaults we were able to save. We made it a walk-in closet, which can be converted to an office space. Everything is in there for them if they wanted to. This is the only unit in the building that has a vault inside there. Yeah. That is neat. Almost gives it an Al Capone type of feel. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's great. Well, I know that you're already taking occupancy, so there must be a model. Can we go take a look There's at it? There's two models. Let's go take a look at one, too. Wow, up here on the fifth floor, what a beautiful end result, because I remember this floor when we were last here. Right, you've seen all the demolition going on. It took two months to get this building cleared out, and that was only from the eighth to the second floor. It didn't even include the first floor sure. and the basement. So that was two months to try to get everything demoed out of here. And not only the demolition, but I remember there were tons of wires, and you had to work within all the historical parameters set forth. Everywhere, too. So remember, there's a lot of different offices here. Every time an office got brought in here, they did their own wiring, their own mechanicals. Everything was different. All the floor levels were different. There was no ceiling. All the ceilings had to be taken down and opened up. And you were right. Everything was just hanging everywhere on here that we had to take out. Out of here. Wow, now this unit's even bigger than the last one. It is. It's just a little bit bigger, Stu. It's about 1,100 square feet. This is a two-bedroom, one-bath unit, but a nice view. You have a courtyard view and you have an outside view. This is a very, very attractive unit. You know, nice long corridors here, spacious bedrooms. I can't get over the size of the bathrooms in this. I mean, it is really like a home here. It's not apartment living in my mind. Yeah, they're large, including the windows. All the windows are so big because of the original windows, and they had those size windows back then, and we had to preserve that height. So you see our ceiling height had to change. You were never allowed to go over a window height. So you see that change in a lot of units. In a testament to the craftsmen that were reconstructing this building, I see the old original woodwork there. And that brings old world charm, even though there's modern fixtures here. It looks like a, a very modern apartment. Right. But yet the old world charm is here. Correct. I mean, we had a lot of very skilled workers here. A lot of very skilled workers training a lot of very unskilled workers. But the process worked. Sure, because as I understand it, you had some workforce requirements that you had to abide by. I mean, how did that go? It went fine. We had city Milwaukee workforce requirement, which is 40% of our total hours of construction had to be, we hired city of Milwaukee residents that were unemployed or underemployed. That went fine. We also had WIDA requirement that we hire out of certain zip codes. That also went fine. We do this a lot, so we know who to hire. It was a testament to Milwaukee. We had a lot of people here that came in and learned a job, wanted to learn a job, showed up every day, and we're hoping that they got some skill from here. And we're hoping some got hired, and I'm sure some did get hired, but we taught a lot of skills here. So whatever they have, they have a skill to go to the next job, and the next job, the next job. We're trying to create careers, not just a job that you have somebody for six months, a job that they can have for the rest of their life. Sure. That's more important than just a job. And what a great project to learn on. And, you know, I've heard that time and time again. We need to get the unemployed residents to work. And it sounds easy. You know, hey, start a project and just hire them. But I think of it from the safety standpoint. All the construction sites that I've had the opportunity to visit, safety is at the forefront. And I'm sure safety is at the forefront here. Because after all, it's not just the worker themselves. It's all your co-workers. It is. Safety is always number one. Always number one for Cardinal. Any construction company, safety is going to be their number one thing to worry about. So we had a very strong safety program here. Whether you were skilled or unskilled, everybody that worked on this project had to go through our training program. It's a half an hour to an hour training program with our safety director. 
They had to listen to it, they had to go through it, and then at that time they were allowed to go work on the site. Here we also had weekly walkthroughs to make sure that we were meeting all OSHA requirements. Everything went really well there too. Cardinal has a very good safety plan that we process on every one of our construction sites. Well, it's wonderful to hear the success stories, and hopefully a, a lot of those workers have found careers. I, I think they have. Cardinal is hired too. And I'm sure a lot of carpenters went on. I think a lot of electricians got hired. I'm sure a lot of painters and drywallers got hired. So we're hoping that these people stay with it and learn these jobs and continue going, or maybe even starting their own company up. That would be great. The more companies we have to choose from as a general contractor, the better it is for me. So it worked out really well. Well, this is a great example of your company's capabilities, and I look forward to visiting you on a future project. Thanks for taking the time out to explain this one. Anytime, Steve. There is no better feeling than having a place you can call home. And at Cardinal Capital Management, we believe everyone should know how that feels. We believe when a home is safe and supportive, it helps form the foundation of our communities. At Cardinal Capital Management, we protect and preserve affordable housing for low and moderate income households and provide a place for many to call home. We provide supportive housing throughout Wisconsin, Iowa, and Arizona. And over the past few years, our preservation projects have been recognized for innovation, design, and beautification. Our award-winning properties include the United House, Veterans Manor, Highland Commons, Empowerment Village Lincoln, Empowerment Village National, and Water Tower View Apartments, just to name a few. But more important than any awards are the smiles we see every day when our residents have a place to call home. Cardinal Capital Management delivering financial and social value. Building Wisconsin is made possible by the members of Plumbers 75, proudly serving their contractors and helping build Wisconsin for over 100 years. We all know the most basic form of life requires clean water to survive. On Earth, we need it to drink, cook, clean, and it touches just about every part of our quality of life. Here in Wisconsin, we appreciate the value of clean water even more as we live alongside the Great Lakes. Yet we often forget to think about how water gets to our homes, schools, and businesses, and then safely back to Mother Nature. Where does all the dirty water go? How is it fresh and clean every time we get a glass of water? Who makes this happen? The answer, plumbers. It's the plumbers who are trained, mentored on the job, and have progressed through a five-year education program that takes them from apprenticeship to a master of their trade. It's plumbers who are committed to a career and have been trained to protect the health and safety of our water system and make sure you never have to think about where it comes from and where it's going. Yes, we're fortunate here in Wisconsin to have an abundant supply of clean, fresh water but even more fortunate to have a highly trained and committed workforce to keep and deliver it that way. Plumbers 75, supporting the plumbing trade in Southeast Wisconsin for over 100 years. Proud to be building Wisconsin. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. Welcome back to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith, and so far in today's show, we've been learning more about the historic restoration of the Germania building here in downtown Milwaukee. Now let's continue with the project's developer, Kalen Haywood. Oh, 
Oh, Kayla, and another beautiful apartment here at the Germania building. And throughout today's show, we've learned a little bit about the history of it. We've learned about the construction process and all the craftsmen involved. And, and now we're seeing the beautiful end result. And you played an integral role in this whole process. And I'm just curious, why did you get involved? Because I'm crazy. I'm a developer. So developers always have this vision that they can change the world and fix any and everything. Um, our home office is about a half a block away from this location. So we either walked by it or drove by it daily. We understood what Germania meant to Milwaukee. And it kind of hurt us that as we drove by and walked by that, we saw green boards um, on the front doors. There were windows broken out and the building was in a lot of disrepair. So being a developer, our first thought is how can we fix it? And unlike other projects that we've completed um, that were from the ground up, new construction, um, some of those get kind of cookie cutter. Uh, Germania presented an opportunity where we can really fix a problem, add value, and restore Milwaukee Jewel back to its original state. Boy, and you've done a wonderful job with it, but it wasn't just your company. There are a lot of partners that helped throughout the process. Well, the first thought is, can we do it? And then if we can do it, who is the we? And so I set out to find the great partners that we have now. Cardinal Capital is an excellent partner. This project wouldn't have gotten done without them. Endeavor Group is a partner as well. Corp Associates is our architect who from day one saw the vision um, and never was daunted by the challenge of what this historical building may offer. Sure, and to work within the historical parameters when you're dealing with something that's over 120 years old, I mean, that must have been challenging for you. Seeing this how most of the time you're doing new construction. I know you've talked to Mark earlier, and Mark is a key player in this deal. The confidence that I had at night to go to sleep um, after my job was solely to create a vision, quarterback the team, work on the financial part of the deal, really help the outside entities understand what we were trying to do. But the bricks and mortar of tearing this building apart and putting it back together was solely on Mark and his team. So those guys give you the confidence to take on projects like this. Well, you know, one of the biggest aspects of this that I found interesting is that it's not just luxury apartments. Mm -hmm. It's market rate apartments, but it's also affordable housing or medium income. Definitely. I think there's a couple of components to that that helps drive the end result. Our company, we put a special focus on trying to create diversity with our developments. Really looking at catalytic areas and how can we introduce a different product to the area that's really going to best serve all the constituents, all the components around it. So you're right, in this building we have a total of 90 units. Of those 90 units, we have 46 market rate luxury units, but we also have 44 affordable units. The reason behind it is very simple. As we talk about how do we grow um, or revitalize downtown Milwaukee, as we talk about all of the social ills that are uh, evident in our city, how can we as Vanguard and Cardinal, how can we create a project and a product that marries like-minded individuals from different economic backgrounds? So we have a new arena a few blocks away from us. We have Northwestern Mutual doing their project a few blocks to the east. Milwaukee downtown is really experiencing a renaissance. But we also need people to help service that renaissance. So the hotel workers, the managers, um, the staff at the new arena, uh, we hope that they will find a home in Germania. Sure. Well, I mean, to me, I think about it. It's not unlike a modern day workplace where you have entry level and you have executive and you work together. And what happens in that workplace scenario? You have an entry level person that sees his boss or his supervisor, his manager, and that gives you hope. You have something to aspire to. We hope that the residents here that come in in an entry-level model will aspire to be like some of their neighbors, that they say, hey, I can dream big, I can be something, and one day they're passing on the same model that we're passing on. So at the end of the day, who do you think are the big winners in this project? Unlike other deals, there's truly a laundry list. I think that we've surpassed the expectations of both WIDA and the city of Milwaukee in this development. I know they're extremely proud of this project. Our teammates, Cardinal and Endeavor and, and our team Vanguard. The architect, this is another feather in his hat for excellent work, but the true winner at the end of the day are the residents, the people that get to go outside, enjoy Milwaukee's River, our arts, our city hall, and it's only a few blocks away. Boy, well, it's a beautiful end result, and by the sound of things, it's filling up fast. So if someone's looking to live in a beautifully historically preserved building with modern amenities, look no further than Germania. Look Germanium. no further than Germania. Thank you for coming on and sharing it Thanks with too. us. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. We have a real housing boom going on in Milwaukee, and that's a wonderful thing. But when you look at the economics of what it costs to do that, 
it's not really feasible to create a rent structure that everybody can afford. And the issue is, can we create housing that is comparable and will encourage folks to live downtown? We can, through programs like tax credits. What does that mean for a younger person who has their first job? And maybe it's an entry-level job. It means they can be downtown, they don't need the car, they can be part of the city life. That's good for the city. They'll probably stick, they'll probably move up the ladder. What does it mean for anybody who is maybe going back to school, a vet, or a mom on her own with a kid, but now she's 30 and she's trying to go to any one of our fine downtown schools? Well, she can have that job, she can almost walk to the school, she can be part of the city, she can make her way back. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Cut. There is no better feeling than having a place you can call home. And at Cardinal Capital Management, we believe everyone should know how that feels. We believe when a home is safe and supportive, it helps form the foundation of our communities. At Cardinal Capital Management, we protect and preserve affordable housing for low and moderate income households and provide a place for many to call home. We provide supportive housing throughout Wisconsin, Iowa, and Arizona. And over the past few years, our preservation projects have been recognized for innovation, design, and beautification. Our award-winning properties include the United House, Veterans Manor, Highland Commons, Empowerment Village Lincoln, Empowerment Village National, and Water Tower View Apartments, just to name a few. But more important than any awards are the smiles we see every day when our residents have a place to call home. Cardinal Capital Management, delivering financial and social value.